So the next thing I want to talk about very briefly is drawing in sketchbooks. Drawing what? Drawing in sketchbooks. Now, um, in my Power to Create class, part of what we do um, in that class is that in the Power to Create class, they have to do five paintings a week. They usually have the same manner. So remember when we did the broken egg paintings? And I had you do one and bring it in. You guys have two weeks to do a painting. That's the easy one. What? That's the one she sold. That's the one she sold. But that's the easy one. If by next week I told you you had to do five of them, the first three are easy. But remember, it's the power to create class. The last two, you're sitting there going, I need to do something else. And it pushes you to think differently. What could you do outside of what you're doing? So the, so the key to uh, being creative is to know what you don't know, that you don't know that you know it. It's kind of a Rumsfeld kind of thing, okay? So, um, so in that class, we do five paintings a week. And in one week, the requirement was 500 drawings. Wow. 500 sketches and drawings. Now, well, you know, the thing is, I had students that would play the game. Just like I said with the website. I have some people that will say, okay, I'll try that. Now, we have kind of a weird association with the word drawing. We even have the weird association with sketching. Now remember, we are dealing with language. And language has history. It has history throughout mankind. And it has our history. When you were first asked to draw, you were told here's paper, here's crayons, go for it. And you went for it. And you were productive and energetic and you were having lots of fun, right? You were making purple cows and painting blue horses and stuff. And then all of a sudden your mom comes in wanting to help you and she goes, there's no such things as purple cows. And besides, that looks like a, that looks like a horse, not a cow. You need to make their legs shorter and the body bigger. And then you go, oh, geez. That's the beginning that we fail with drawing, okay? We just, now we think everybody's gonna judge us and I don't draw very well. That's the conversation we have. Then your mother comes in and goes, don't waste that paper, draw on the other side. What do you think we are? There are people out here that are like, you know, <coughs> use the other side, put more drawings on it. So you go, oh, now I can't waste my paper. Remember when you were a kid and you had no idea what things cost? You would waste it all the time and then mom goes, don't do that. So we have this weird feeling that this sheet of paper has some value to it. And we, when we have it in a sketchbook, right, it becomes out like in the sketchbook, it's like these, this paper in here is sacred. Somebody sat and bound this. Now some people decide that they're going to learn how to draw. And I can guarantee you, most of you, if not all of you, are guilty of this. So you decide, what would really make a difference in my drawing today? I'm going to buy a really good sketchbook. <laughs> That's going to be the big difference. So you go down to one of these stationery stores, and you buy one that has been uh, assembled by Gregorian monks in a monastery in the basement with paper that is hand-pressed and blessed by the Pope. It's leather bound with gold writing and your initials and there it sits with beautiful bookmarks in it and you open it up and you have all of these white sheets and you go well it's an awfully pretty book. You know my drawing my mom told me when I was four I wasn't very good at doing cows so I'm not going to do, maybe, mm, I remember somebody telling me I said, so, so uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll save a few pages in the front just so that when I get good I can fill up the front there and I'll start in here and you're like, okay, let's start drawing. Um, the subject should be good because this is my really good book. <laughs> can you see what happens? And then you go, well, I can't waste any paper because my mom told me so. Right? So then you go, maybe I should wait till I draw a little bit better so I don't waste any of these beautiful, precious papers. And then this goes and sits on your shelf. How many of you have an empty sketchbook that's sitting on your shelf that you intended to draw with? Okay. 
everyone has that. And the reason why is because we used, ever since we were little, we used the word drawing and sketching. And it becomes really fearful. And so we look at these as sketchbooks and drawing books, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to switch the language on you so that you can get that book out and be productive with it. And it works. We no longer sketch or draw in this class. We doodle. We doodle our way to become great artists. Why? Because everybody loves to doodle. All of you doodle while you're on the phone. And if you don't, you don't have any friends that talk a long time. Okay? If you want to learn how to doodle, let me give you some phone numbers of people I know. Okay? There were people in my past that I immediately would bring paper over because I knew I was going to be, remember in the olden days when you were stuck to the wall, you know? And so you'd pull up a chair and then you'd have something to do. And all you go is, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. And then you uh-huh, yeah, yeah, I feel that way too. So and then you would start, computer solitaire. huh? Now you can play computer solitaire all the time. Well, that requires a little brain mass. Now, computers, you still have to think. But the thing is with doodling is that it's a subconscious act. Yeah, and then what you do is sometimes you sit there and go, oh, that's kind of cool. And you hang up the phone and you go, I'm going to put some ears on that. And I'm like, okay, I need to go do something else. And you'll have like a stack of these. And usually you doodle on bills or something, on you know, back of envelopes and stuff. But it's a very fun activity. And sometimes what we want to do is we want to doodle with intent. And so I don't want you to draw or sketch. I want you to doodle with the intent that while you're doodling, it's going to look like something in front of you. So don't draw anymore, because when we draw, we worry. We worry about proportions and our ego and all that stuff. Just doodle it, because it's really not that important. And why do we doodle? Why do we practice? When you play the piano, you spend a half an hour doing scales. Non-music at all. And when you're done, you close the piano and it's gone. You never tape you practicing scales. Okay? But somehow, because paper is very valuable and really shouldn't be wasted because that's what my mom told me so. We don't want to, you know, draw anything on here that's going to go to waste. So we end up wasting a lot of time with that. So what I would like you to do is start taking up doodling. And doodle with the intent of producing lots of them. Practice and paper is not uh, scarce. I threw away two gigantic garbage bags of paper full, just emptying out all my bills that I never open up. Okay? All of that crap that comes in with your envelopes and stuff. 200 pound bags of paper that we throw away. If we can throw that away, we can throw away our sketchbook. So go and produce, and, and in the Power to Create class, there were students that took on doing 500 doodles a week, and they did it. Because they had no attachment, and they would have five, six, seven doodles on every page. And this is what your doodle book looks like. It looks like just chaotic sketches of things that you do throughout the day. So when do you doodle? When you're at Home Depot waiting in line. When you're waiting at a stoplight. When people are walking towards you and they're walking away. You very quickly just doodle them. Don't try to get the proportions and get the drawing and get all that language involved. Don't try to save the paper. Doodle, doodle, doodle. And when you get your sketchbook at home, I want you to take a clump of pages, open it up, and scribble. And then go down a few more pages and scribble across. Take the holy relic off your shelf and mess it up. Take the binding and bend it. Okay? Throw it down on the ground. Okay? Step on it. Okay? It's not a holy relic. Use the damn thing. <laughs> okay? And through practice, you will. I guarantee you, if you practice every week and not do 500, but let's say 100. If I ask for 100, because I asked my students down in Reading, I said, now I want you to do 100 uh, doodles this month, I mean this week. And they were like, not going to happen. Not going to happen. I said, why not? I got to, I work. In fact, the, the one student that did all of the work that I requested. She worked full time and had two young children that were like three and four. And I had a full time job. And she got 
she had co-workers. When she came home at night and her kids were sleeping, she sat and doodled them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you'll be surprised, and it is fun. Students are coming back to class, going. I sat there at the basketball game, and they doodled. The, what they were all waiting at the edge of the court, waiting, you know, <laughs> half time, and they were all standing. Like, she just went and doodled the, the whole line of the basketball team, a high school team, all the way across, and they were the coolest. Little, all these different poses that she captured as she went over, just like writing a story, and all of these really cool doodles across. And it was just, and it was on top of a, of another doodle that she did because it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And so she just, and she said it was so much fun. So doodle your way to becoming an artist. Just give it a try. Yeah. When my mother was alive, she passed away at the end of 2012. Um, I would go and take care of her during the week, and my sister would come on the weekends. And so my mother started this book, if you will. And so my sister, she, my sister was the first one to put anything in it. And it was, okay, well, what's your day like? And then she would ask me a question. I would respond to my sister next time I came in, and we both did illustrations. Mm -hmm. It was like comic books, and some of them were hilarious. Mm -hmm. And we kept doing this and doing this for a couple of years, and I think my sister still has it. But, but aren't you glad you have that? Yeah. I mean, just even knowing that they're there. Now, now when you're done, you'll end up, the gal that was in my class ended up with 15 sketchbooks that she did in 16 weeks. I mean, literally a sketchbook a week she did. I mean, that's how, how much. And you just fill up the pages. Um, and this is another, that's how you end up, these, these guys produce a lot of, of sketches, right? That's how you get to this level, is that you just become interested. This guy's interested, he lives up in Alaska. This guy's interested in doing animals, so that's what's available to him. So anyway, so doodling's gonna be part. So I'm requesting that all of you by next week Get those relics off the shelf and begin doodling them. Put them next to your phone, bring it in your purse. Try to carry it with you every day till the next class. And when you're at the doctor's and you're doing, doodle, 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 doodle. Don't put any attachment to it. Don't worry about it if it's any good. And don't share it with anybody. I am not going to look at them. I'm not going to judge them. I do want them to come here so that we have physically the evidence. And if you want to share your experience, that's awesome if you want to flip your book. But I am not going to hold up your doodles and say these, these doodles are not what I was expecting because I don't want to put that language on doodles. It, doodle is kind of sacred. Nobody's ever questioned your doodles. They question your drawing. They question your sketches. Doodles are kind of something that is sacred that you do for yourself and nobody questions a doodle. Yeah. Could it be out of your imagination? Anything. It's practice. Even if you're doing it out of your imagination and you know, you're working your right brain. And so it's all practice. It's like doing scales on a piano. Da -da 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 -da. The more scales you do, right? The better you get. That's how you get the fingers going, get the brain going, you know. Yeah. That's a good way to think. Michael's my head. So pick up several sketchbooks when they're on sale so that you can get rid of that conversation your mom gave you. Don't waste the paper. Okay? Get that. You waste paper every day. Mess those books up. Move them. But you need to practice. I guarantee you, painting is drawing with color. That's all painting is. And if you want to become better painters, you must practice drawing. You will never become a jazz musician if you don't know your instrument. You need to know your instrument. Yeah. So just use a pencil to light yeah. a shadow? Yeah. And that's another great question. Use a pencil with no eraser, or use a ballpark marker, or use a Sharpie marker. Because in doodling, when you doodle on the phone, oftentimes you doodle with an ink pen. And you never erase. Have you never noticed? If you want to make something correct, you a little darker. You don't sit there and go, where's my eraser while you're talking to someone on the phone. You darken things. And that's how you will doodle your way to success, is that you don't erase. You don't judge. You don't look back. You just keep looking forward. And, and when something starts to appear, you run with it. You'll become better drawers. You'll be amazed by next year if you do this every week. So I want to throw that into our conversation. Any questions?